What is up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in his mug. Here we are, part two of three. This is where we are at the end of today. We are bringing the colors back up. We're highlighting our Wolfric the Wanderer, and I think he's looking pretty good. So here's the colors we're going to use. Screamer Pink. Xandri Dust. A lot of these are going to be the colors we used for the first part of the video. Death World Forest, you're going to see some lighter colors. Sirius Purple. But overall, we're bringing the colors back up. Rune Lord Brass. Dark Reaper. Rune Fang Steel. Steel Legion Drab. Rekarth Flesh. And is that it? I think that might be it. Bugman's Glow. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I highlight the skin up. And yeah, I think that is it. So let's get started. We're going to take it right from when the all of the washes and the shades dried at the end of the last video. So the first thing we're going to do is start bringing the colors back up with the bone. So all of the bone areas are uh, nice and dirty, dark, subdued here. Uh, this is really up to your preference if you want your bone areas to be kind of like that dark, dirty look, or if you want them to look really ble sun bleached and bright. I, I think the latter is good if you're doing miniatures that you want to have a good display quality to them so that people will be able to see them from far away. So I'm going to go in with my Rackarth Flesh here and I'm going to be starting the paint from the top and the back and pulling the colors forward. And most of these luckily are skulls that are uh, kind of placed correctly or um, I guess upright. So the teeth are at the bottom, the top of the head is at the top. And that means that as we're getting closer to the bottom towards the teeth, we're using less and less paint so that when we get down to the teeth or the, the upper row of teeth on the skulls, you're just kind of dusting those teeth and like the, the, the top of the, the nose, the bridge of the nose and the upper lip area with that Rackarth Flesh paint. It helps if you thin your paint down. It always does. So I always suggest using a wet palette thinning down your paint with either water or uh, paint thinner medium and that allows you to really have more control over the paint as you're going. It's not going to be as thick on your brush and consequently when you put it on the model it's not going to be as thick. I always say this when people ask me or when I see a comment how thin should the paint be? How much water should you add to, to, to paint in your in your um, wet palette and there's no real quick answer for that it's basically you want to add enough water to the paint so that when you mix it up and then you put it on your brush as you're painting your model it should have the consistency of a thick cream and uh, whatever that means to you I think we've all kind of got a, a, a different idea of that but that is going to be the easiest way to highlight up your your models use that kind of consistency and uh, highlight your models with your paint and always use less than you think you need because chances are you don't need that much for your highlights especially edge highlighting or when you're feathering the highlights on uh, you do not need too much paint now you can see I'm moving on to the chaos ogre or troll skull up here and I'm sticking to the the temple line the brow line and right down the center uh, of the, the, the face down to the upper teeth. When I'm going in to paint the cheekbones, I'm really going to start from the outside and uh, pull myself, uh, pull the paint in towards the eye socket. I've seen people kind of uh, do it differently, going from just the top and working their way down for all areas of uh, the skull. And that works also as well. It, it creates a good point for for you to look at with the with the light coming down. But it's really again that's it's up to you. Generally, for painting highlights on organic material like the the flayed skin, the uh, the lining of the cloak, even uh, something that is like the skull, all the skulls on the model, anything that was at one point alive, I found that 
doing short strokes like how I'm showing you right now, short quick strokes with uh, the least amount of paint on your brush that you think you can use is generally the best way to achieve good brush strokes. Very organic, random, um, but, but with a sense of good direction to it. So I'm just basically looking for all the skulls and bones. And I am highlighting those up on the model with rack art flesh. If you want your models to look a little bit more sepia toned or have a little bit more of a reddish brown shading rather than this blackish uh, dark brownish black shading that you get from the known oil and the Agrax earth shade, you could either highlight up with Zandri dust which is more of a yellow, sandy kind of color, or any of the layer colors that kind of look like Talarn based. So you've got Talarn sand, uh, Carrack stone, any of those kind of sandier colors. Rackart flesh is a very off-white, creamy kind of bone color, and if you want to do like a mid, a little bit step higher from a Steel Legion drab, then that would be perfectly fine. With those layer colors though, you want to be careful that you put a little bit less on your brush than you would with a base coat or base color because uh, layer colors tend to be very runny and uh, especially if you don't shake the bottles up. Generally as a rule if you're using Games Workshop colors which I do almost exclusively you want to really shake those colors up or shake those pots up all the time because the pigment always without fail for, for me anyway in my in my experience they tend to separate. So as long as you keep shaking it up, then um, it should be fine. But generally I'm just repeating the same technique over and over again. Luckily all the skulls are facing different directions and they're kind of at different angles. So I'm sorry, I'm kind of distracted. I'm looking at my dog, Duke. He's, um, he's got this thing now where he plays with golf balls. If, if I'm working and he wants to play and uh, I'm, I'm a little busy, he'll play with a golf ball and he'll go up the steps to the garage and he'll drop the golf ball down the steps so that it makes that noise of, you know, just imagine a golf ball falling down steps like a, bouncing like a, like a slinky toy uh, would bouncing down the steps. But it's a golf ball so it bounces and has a very hard clangy noise and then he chases it. So every once in a while I'll hear him grab the ball and run up the steps and then it'll be quiet for a couple seconds and then I'll hear dunk 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 and then I'll see the golf ball out of the corner of my eye and then he'll come running down chasing it. <laughs> That's usually my cue to go and um, play with him so I'm gonna keep painting these bones. You might have seen me painting the um, torso of that skeleton on the trophy rack, the come at me bro skeleton and uh, you want to be careful when painting that because it's got it's got those uh, lines of shading so you want to paint at it from an angle you don't want to paint put the paint on straight on like a uh, point forward you kind of want to go at a little bit of an angle from the top to bottom almost dry brushing those bones otherwise your rack heart flesh will uh, have the danger of getting into those cracks and crevices if they do no problem just go back over with agrax earth shade and known oil all right i'm gonna go play with my dog All right, welcome back. We're starting up the next highlight color, and this is going to be Rune Lord Brass. When you shade Balthazar Gold with Known Oil or Agrax Earth Shade, it creates a very cool dark bronze color. And uh, I found when highlighting up from that, if you want to go with a dark evil look, then Rune Lord Brass is or, or um, Rune Lord Bronze. I don't remember if it's Rune Lord Browns or Rune Lord Brass. It is a terrific color because it is still kind of dark brown, understated. It's not really bright red like Brass Scorpion is. Brass Scorpion to me is very, uh, very blood for the blood god, corn centric. And to me, this 
Rune Lord Brass color looks a little bit more understated, subtle. Um, it, it just gives a, a cooler finish if I'm going for a more gritty and realistic look, which to me, this Wolfric, this Wolfric model is going for. Crazy dog. Um, what is he eating? So I'm going to just be painting all the gold trim and um, try to start from the edges and work my way in uh, rather than starting from the center and pushing my way out towards the edges. So you can see every time I'm trying to paint a new section, I kind of paint from the hard edges of whatever I'm painting and uh, that allows me to smooth the paint out and kind of drag it down the surface and I think my dog is high on something. I'm going to make sure he's okay. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. Silly dog. They're so cute when they're puppies. Okay, remember this guy's got a bunch of armor plates below the shoulder. Kind of secondary protective plates. So those all have golden edging. Or this uh, brass edging. And also don't forget on his torso, he's got the plates that are protecting his legs. Uh, the knee pad plates as well as the one covering his stomach right above the chainmail. He's got like uh, two plates, I think, that have that gold edging to it. So here you can see that we're painting the back of the rims of all of the shoulder plates and moving towards the front. It's really easy to forget, especially when you've got a large uh, obstruction like this troll skull or giant skull or whatever it is, to uh, remember that you also have to paint the backside of that same piece. So try to stay uh, consistent and make sure you you really carefully examine the model to catch all of the surfaces. Now we're getting into Bugman's Glow and Rackarth Flesh. This is the highlight that we're going to use for all of the skin areas before we uh, shade it down further with some really awesome Drukai Violet. So the exact formula you're going to use is going to be different depending on what effect you want to achieve. Usually I go about 50 to 60, 70 percent Bugman's Glow and then just add a little bit of Rackarth Flesh and if that isn't enough for you then steadily add a little bit more but in general you want to start closer to the original color which was Bugman's Glow if you remember and then slowly add in the Rackarth Flesh to create the look of pale blood drained skin. And we are going to follow the lines of the bones. We kind of want to trace the anatomy of all of the skin to where we want the highlight to really appear on the edges, especially of the tattered flayed skin and uh, all the folds that are folded over. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of sticking close to the edges. I'm not really starting at the center. I'm sticking to the edges and I'm doing these short brush strokes to kind of uh, bring the eye to looking at the uh, the outline of what I'm painting and leave, leaving the shading in the center, at least for now. That way if we start to um, do even more to create the effect of skin that's been uh, flayed and cured and left to dry and looks really leathery, then um, we can kind of build on, on that. But having the center of the skin be uh, still po possibly having a little bit of of ruddiness and and healthy glow to it and then really having the pale and like I said blood trained parts of the skin be the edges where the skin was just brutally ripped off of the skeleton that's kind of the effect that I'm going for and so when I'm painting the highlights towards the center of the the skin I'm starting from the edge and moving my way up rather than starting from the center and moving my way towards the edges I'm trying to look to see, okay, where do I want to accentuate the uh, the shape of the body? So I'm trying to trace where, where I think the pectorals would be. And it kind of helps because the sculptor 
kind of put in those uh, the nipples and I think the navel of this uh, poor victim here. So you can kind of trace, okay, this is where the chest would kind of um, be squared outwards and as we're getting lower down the torso then we're gonna uh, you know try to pull in that uh, the shape to look more like a v-shape and this is all very <laughs> abstract thinking here and uh, the simplest most easiest way that I can think to describe this technique is basically put the paler skin towards the edges and work your way towards the center everything else after that is really just you know theory and now my brush is really starting to fray because this is this particular brush is one that I don't really take very good care of. Um, hopefully I, I'll be getting some new brushes soon, but um, yeah, take care of your brushes. This, this is one that went with me to Hawaii. I think I bought this brush in Hawaii like a few years back and it served me well. It's lasted a lot longer than most of the brushes when I first started. And since this one technique is requires a lot of uh, feathering to soften the colors and you, you don't want any harsh, harsh lines with this highlighting. So I decided, ah, my, my brush is pretty much dying on me. So I'll just, you know, use it as a feathering, almost a dry brush. And here we are on the right arm. We're kind of doing the same thing. I just put a little bit more paint on the brush and I'm working my way down the arm towards the hand, towards the fingers. And I'm kind of tracing the structure of where the, the bone structure in the hand would be. So kind of sticking towards the center of the, the back of the hand and then tracing lines out towards each of the fingers. All right, and then I'm now tracing around the back of the skull hanging on the edge of the shield. And as you go, you'll notice that your colors may seem a little washed out. So that's when you wanna start adding more rack hard flesh. Or if you think that it's a little bit too light, then that's when you go back down with some Raeklin flesh shade and shade it back down. But it's really up to you as the artist to decide how much highlight you wanna add, how much of that highlight color, that rack hard flesh you wanna add, and um, how much, if you want to shade it back down, where those shadows are gonna be. And uh, again, as always, I apologize for the focus. I, I've noticed that when I turn it to the side like this to work on the uh, shield, it tends to want to focus on my right hand more than the model. So um, every time I look at the viewfinder, I, I try to keep it in focus as much as possible. This is such a great example I think of whoever sculpted this model, I, I actually probably didn't give them as much credit as I should have. The, the picture that they took for the, the advertisement of this model is just really not a good uh, display of this, this sculptor's skill. Or, or they should have added another shot in there showing the shield because this tattered flayed skin on the shield is just so gruesome and I don't think there's anything really like it. Ogre Kingdoms has a lot of really gruesome stuff, but it's like showing his arms and his hands. It's not just the, the skin draped across the shield, but you, you rarely see Games Workshop go this far with showing a victim's, um, you know, remains. A lot of times you just see bones and maybe flayed skin with the chaos symbol burned on them, but this is, this is like next level torture kind of stuff. I was never into those kinds of movies, you know, like Saw and Hostel. They called it torture porn. And um, I was never into that kind of gross out horror movies. They always, they always kind of rubbed me wrong. I think my favorite kinds of horror movies were the ones that really play on uh, atmosphere and the feeling of dread, dread of the unknown and um, that kind of stuff. Like uh, Exorcist, Event Horizon, The Conjuring, The Others with Nicole Kidman. Uh, the ones that really establish a, uh, a mood and a feel and a ratchet up that, that dread and that tension. That's why models like this, I think, are more interesting to me than like any of the new Age of Sigmar Chaos stuff. 
which is weird because they're so so well sculpted and uh, yet they're just packed with so much detail and most of the detail is like skulls and the corn symbol or like the oh boy don't even get me started on the stormcast eternals and their uh, hammer twin tail comet lightning bolt motifs all right so now you can tell i added in a little bit more rack art flesh i'm ratcheting up the uh the highlight here and as i'm going i'm picking first the places where i know we want that really uh, blood drained look to be and that's the the tattered ragged edges of this poor guy's skin and now I'm moving in towards the center so I'm, I'm thinking okay where would the most stretched out uh, effect uh, where would that play really well when you're looking at the model so I'm really focusing first on kind of the upper body his upper upper pectorals and where the lines uh, in his torso would make the most sense to have light reflecting and to show that almost translucent translucency of his uh, skin now that it's been shorn off of his body and, and placed on his shield. Ugh. I think Games Workshop tried to do some of that gothic horror uh, atmospheric I guess uh, those aesthetics earlier in uh, past past designs of like the vampire counts. If you look at the earlier vampire counts artwork from the actually like the early 2000s, maybe before their their last army book, then uh, some of the stuff is really gory and dark and gothic and just really really well done. And then you look at the latest vampire counts army book from I guess you would say from eighth edition. Where they added the Coven Throne and the Mortis Engine and all the all the big stuff, and um, the cartoon cover is so, or the cover of the army book is so cartoony. It's it's like it uh it really shows that Games Workshop is trying to uh, pull back from the from marketing to to a, to that that older that older audience and is trying to get the younger the younger war gamer into into the army. This looks like so cartoon. It looks like something out of Scooby Doo. All right. So the great part about adding in more highlight color, more rack, uh, rack art flesh, is that you can now really find those those levels to highlight in the hands. You can highlight the palm, um, where the where the heel and the uh, right where the thumb are, and leave that shading down underneath it. Now we're going in for the face I believe so I'm actually starting with the brow ridge and then I'm pulling down towards the nose I'm just adding a little bit of rack art flesh and I'm sticking to the most prominent areas of the model we're giving him that little bit of uh, highlighted skin look try not to do too much because uh, we don't want him to look cartoonish and uh, yeah I'm really I'm really happy with how the skin turned out. I think once we give it that purple wash too and we tie it down with maybe another wash of Raekwon Flesh Shade, it's really gonna tie tie into the rest of the, the shaded skin. But I mean, just looking at it right now, you can really see where all the details are. And that's fantastic because you wanna be able to tell from the table away what is what on a model. And uh, the, one of the first things the eye pulls towards is the face. So if you have a well-highlighted, well-defined, well-shaded face, then that's, you know, that's one giant step forward in the opinion of your your viewer right there. And now we're adding in a little bit more rack hearth flesh, and I I believe in this step we are just going. Yeah, going straight rack hearth flesh right onto onto the face so uh, this is the third color that infamous pop color that we're uh, just slightly painting it in we don't want too much because uh, we want it to accentuate and show the, the the contrast and the depth between the upper and the lower layers and that I think looks really good if you look at it right there just it looks really really good you could have your model shaded really well give it a couple uh, 
washes and it'll look really dark and gritty but the trouble is from half the table away your opponent is just going to see a lot of muddiness and a lot of shade and um, I've seen I've, I've been guilty of this myself with my my orcs when I discovered BL10 green or I think before it was Thraka green and I just hit a model with the base coat and did like two layers of wash and pretty much just left it like that and I was like I don't need to highlight it it looks great the, the greens are all connected and tied together it's perfect and um, the danger with that is sure there's shadows and it looks really well done but unfortunately there's no contrast and it doesn't look doesn't look as good as it as it could so now we're taking Mornfang Brown and we're highlighting back up the beard and I'm starting from closer to the face and pulling the color down towards the edge I'm also working my way into the mohawk and here we want to keep a little bit of the shading at the bottom where the hair meets the head so I'm kind of pulling from maybe 75% uh, down the hair up towards the top and the tips of the mohawk this creates that uh, that optical illusion of light hitting the hair and giving it that nice red brown glow and then sh um, the shadows kind of sticking it close to where the head is and there is the hair and the beard so far I still want to do a part three to this video Steel Legion Drab and add any third pop colors like really final details maybe some nice uh, gory blood effects if my client wants that I just picked up some new Tamiya clear red I actually picked it up in Hawaii when we were there and um, I'm, I'm really happy with that I, can, I can't wait to get back to doing some more um, blood effects using it and Blood for the Blood God is okay but really the best blood effects that, that I think you can achieve are with Tamiya clear red and some Abaddon Black, maybe some Dryad Bark, mix, mix, mixing it all together and creating a very dark, red, goopy, congealed blood effect. And then if you add some, uh, some PVA glue as well, oh boy, you can create some effects like stringing the blood off of the edge of your weapon. Um, maybe I'll do that. I'll ask my client if, if I can do that because it looks like that sword at that angle just begs for it to be dripping with some blood. Plus I could paint it on the back of the flayed man, I could have it dripping down from the hands, the wrists, oh gosh, I could even have maybe one of the skulls, like one of his fresher skulls being completely bloody like it was just, it was just collected. Ooh, shivering with anticipation. Patient. What I'm doing is I'm painting on the uh, wood grain with Steel Legion Drab and um, you're actually going to be painting a finer wood grain inside those lines with Carax Stone. So again, we're using different colors to create depth. I'm using Steel Legion Drab also to be painting... What is on this? Oh, the glove. We're painting highlights on the two gloves because we shaded those down. So they're really, really dark. It's hard to find the uh, detail and the lines and that's where the highlight color is going to come in. Again we're painting the, the, the details there on the back of the cloak, the wood grain, and then we're going to build up the cloak. The fur of the cloak is going to be built up using Steel Legion Drab. So now I've decided to move to the cloak and I'm painting the center section of the cloak and um, I'm trying to have all my Steel Legion drab and uh, painting the edges of the fur so that it's working its way towards the, uh, towards the edges and we're creating a little bit of a cool highlighting effect. Next one we add the next color, I believe it was, is it Bane Blade Brown? Yeah, there it is. We're going to be um, following the lines that we created with Steel Legion Drab and pulling our colors towards the ed edges of the fur. And again, we're using very short and precise brush strokes to uh, simulate the effect of fur 
rippling in the wind as the cloak billows behind Wolfric. So you can see that I've only got paint on the very tip of the brush and I'm pulling it all in short, precise strokes in uh, the pattern of the fur and uh, trying to create a kind of wavy effect of all of the fur and the cloak and um, that's going to create the visual effect when the viewer is looking at the model of the cloak kind of in motion. Now we're finishing up with Rackard Flesh. So you might notice a pattern, which I said in my other videos. A Rackard Flesh is in such an excellent highlight color. It's not as stark as white, and it's not as, um, I guess, harsh of a highlight color. And if you add it to other colors, it doesn't change the uh, it doesn't change the effect of that color like if I added white to red then it would turn into pink if I added Rackard flesh to red then uh, using it in small amounts it will turn into a lighter uh, lighter pinker color or lighter redder color there are other colors you should actually combine to turn your paints into highlight colors like if you were gonna highlight red to an even brighter red uh, you could turn it into more of an orange color by adding in a bright yellow. But uh, that's that's all color theory that I, I haven't really studied in school. All I know is that Rackard Flesh is a great highlight color and when you add it to a textured surface like that cloak in lines that show those short strokes like that then it creates a very cool textured effect. When we're painting the Dark Reaper onto the scales here, I'm starting from the top and I'm shading only about maybe like 75% of the way down each scale. And that's to leave that 25% still kind of in the shadow along with the line underneath each scale that uh, the, the crevice should have that shading of the Druk High Violet still really prominent and creating such a you know cool sense of depth. And uh, it's not that hard to shade each of these individually. The, the thing you don't want to do is do a dry brushing effect because if any of your Dark Reaper gets into the Drukai Violet into the crevices, you really have to go back and reshade it. Just like if you got any Rackard flesh into the cracks between the ribs of the uh, Come At Me Bro skeleton. All right, so I'm adding a little bit of Seraphim Sepia. Seraphim! Seraphim Sepia! To uh, some of the skulls. We're not going to do all of them, but we are adding it just to show a little bit of yellowed age for each of the skulls. So some of them are fresh. Uh, I, hopefully I can get one of them to be really bloody if the client will allow me to. And some of them are sun bleached, like they've been... Um, you know, traveling with him for a while, and some of them are going to be so old that they're starting to yellow and brown in from the sun. So you can see I just did a, a couple of the the skulls there down down his back and on his right shoulder pad, and now we're really just kind of racing towards the finish line. Balthazar Gold. Why did I? Why did I want Balthazar Gold? Oh yeah, I'm, I wanted to do the corn symbol on the Chaos Ogre skull here in a, a bright brass. So Balthazar Goat is a perfect, perfect base coat for that. Now that the skull is finished. But you can tell if you look at the light, uh, or look at the, the areas that are hit by the light, that Rune Lord brass looks really, really good. Runefang Steel now, we're going to use this to highlight up the silver. Yeah, that light hitting that Rune, Rune Lord Brass with the uh, black and Agrax Earthshade in the crevices looks just really, really good, I think. Your 
your Runefang Steel is going to hit all of the flat silver areas, like the shield here, starting kind of from the center and feathering out. So find the center of each of your silver surfaces and feather the paint outwards. We're also going to hit the sword, but only the top half of the sword, so the light picks up on the top half. This is okay to do in this situation because the sword is held horizontally. If he was holding his sword up and we only shade one half of the blade, then it would look a little bit odd, but since the bottom half of the blade is in shadow, the entire thing is in shadow, we're going to play up that optical illusion and paint only the top half of the sword on both sides with Rune Fang Steel. I keep wanting to say Mithril Silver because that's the old color, but Games Workshop is uh, notorious for, at least in, in the past like 10-15 years, for changing their, their color ranges. I heard they're releasing a new line of airbrush paints, but it's it's really like their current line of brush-on paints. But uh, what is the rumor I read that they're they're discontinuing some colors that haven't been selling well. So I have no idea what those colors are. I, I hope that's not true. I hope that's just a rumor because some of the colors I I use for painting these models, um, it's going to be a bummer if they discontinue them, and I have to look for equivalents in other ranges. There's that joint guard you can see right uh, next to his chest on his upper right pectoral that I painted the top half. It's a little spike on it, the flat round disc thing connecting the shoulder pad to the torso armor. So uh, just paint the top half of that spike in, in rune fang steel. And uh, now I'm working on the chainmail that's hanging down and all the little flat plates on his, like protecting his knee there. Yeah, we are getting towards the finish line with this model, you guys, but since it is a War Master level, we're not going to stop here. We're going to add a little bit more detail, so I hope you uh, come back for part three of how to paint a Wolfric the Wanderer. Um, I think that's going to be... it's it's going to really raise this uh, model up to the next level. And the, the resin base that I got for him looks really, really cool. That's why he's not on a base right now. I'm planning to finish painting him, and then I'm going to pin him into his base. I told him that Duke drops his golf ball down the steps. He plays he plays golf ball. Oh. Now as we're pulling our model towards the finish line, there's uh, only a couple more things we're we're gonna do in this section. And And then, yeah, and then I think we'll, we'll be done with this part of the model, this part of the highlighting. And that's, yeah, the fine details. So serious purple, being totally serious right now, you guys. We're going to paint up the center sections of all the Nagaroth night pieces. This is very simple. It's only one, one, uh, one highlight at this point. And Screamer Pink for the scroll case. So the tricky thing with the scroll case is it's got um, different surfaces, different planes, so I'm kind of sticking towards highlighting the one that's closest to the light. That way you've got that uh, shaded screamer pink right below it. And uh, yeah, I think I'm painting the one closest to the light and the one that's flat facing front. Ah, uh, Emperor's Children. The second highlight for the scroll case is going to hit just the, the edge so that the eye can pick up the edge. But we, we don't want to go too heavy because Emperor's Children is a very... It's a uh, very vulgar pink. It's very bright. Like your underwear. Hey! <laughs> My underwear is not vulgar. So now as we're pulling ourselves closer and closer to the finish line, 
we're really, really pulling out all the stops here because there's so much detail on this model. And there's so many different surfaces. Um, I can tell that I, I put a little bit too much Emperor's Children pink on it, so I'm just going back over with Screamer pink. And again, you guys, if you mess up or if you paint, get any of your paint on different surfaces, it's so simple to just go back, just clean your brush off and paint the color that was uh, preceding that color. And uh, you'll be amazed by how cleaner your highlights look when you uh, tighten, tighten them up from, from the other side. Now we're painting Death World Forest onto the boots. I think this is one of the last steps that we're that we're gonna paint. And uh, just like the Crom the Conqueror, we're starting from the cuff that's hanging over the foot, and we're feathering our highlight up towards the top. We're doing that on both sides, and we're also painting the uh, the line of the boot, the outline of the boot, so that the eye can really easily identify it. So we're kind of pulling from the center and pulling outwards on both sides. Try to pick up as well all of the uh, folds and lines in the boot. Right boot now. Okay, both sides, and you can see Death World Forest is a, it's a great highlight for Castle and Green. It's just a little bit uh, higher up the color color wheel. It almost looks like because it has that almost light tan beige kind of quality to it added into the green. It's not a, a brighter green, not like a neon green, like a lot of the goblin colors are, like Skarsnik green, Warbostay green, Moot green especially looks really neon. Uh, this is a very subdued highlight, so uh, I like it a lot. And it's very easy to transition from there up to straight Rackarth flesh, which is what we're doing next. And we are basically just painting within the highlight of the Death World Forest. So very simple to just uh, very, very easily and lightly paint it on. You don't want too much paint on your brush. For any any of these highlights, you don't want too much paint on your brush. You're, you just want to get the impression of a lighter color on top of the color you put before it. I'm going to hit both boots with these and that is going to be it you guys. So thank you so much for watching this video, How to Paint a Wolfric Part 2 of 3. I am certain in the next video we are going to finish painting this guy up so if if you had a good time and uh, you were able to get some work done while you watch this video that's uh, fantastic thank you for watching if you can give this video a like uh, share it tell all your friends subscribe leave a comment if, if you haven't subscribed uh, what are you doing hit the subscribe button and join the google group where boss taste 2015 painting community we'd love to see you there love to see your work there oh look at that that looks so cool uh, I can't wait to get to finishing it. We're going to do a little bit more. <laughs> what? We're doing more Bane Blade Brown. But uh, I'm going to wrap it here because uh, my eyes are starting to get cross-eyed. I'm so exhausted and I'm going to go to sleep. Good night, players.